Welcome to the Correct DRS User Tutorial, Paint Basics. For this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through a specific basic example of Paint. But Paint has really grown into a powerful and flexible tool with many options. So after I show you this one example, I will go over a lot of the other options that we didn't get a chance to take a look at. For this example, we will be using the Polecat clip. Media for this clip is available for download from the support portal if you want to follow along. I'm going to show you how to fix the large defect on frame 78. So let's take a look at the surrounding frames. Now navigate to frame 78. Open the paint tool by clicking on the paint tab or pressing the F4 shortcut key. The paint tool has three main modes, Reveal, Clone, and Color. For this defect, we'll use Reveal. Reveal mode allows you to pick a reference frame, align it to the current frame, and paint in good pixels from the reference frame. Think of it as placing the reference frame underneath the current frame and painting away pixels in the defect area to reveal the good pixels from the reference frame below. There are two ways to choose a reference frame. You can set an absolute reference frame, which sets a specific frame number as the reference. This frame will remain the reference for any target frame until you manually change it. Or you can use a relative reference frame. This allows you to specify an offset and constantly updates the reference frame as you move through the clip. So, for example, here we have a relative value of negative 2. So the reference frame is 2 frames back, or frame 76. If we move on to frame 79, this will automatically update the reference frame to be frame 77. I'm going to use Quick Align to set up my reference frame alignment. Quick Align lets you set an alignment point within a frame. Paint will then find this feature in both frames and use it to match up the material. It's a good idea to choose features that are easily recognizable. I'm going to choose this corner where the floor intersects the banister. This kind of sharp angle or corner is always a good choice. Once I have selected my point, Paint auto aligns and enters free transform mode. I'll talk a little more about free transform mode in a moment, but first I want to show you the two ways of visualizing the alignment. We are currently in mix mode, which shows a 50-50 overlay of the two different frames. If we switch to diff mode, what we see is a grayscale where the difference between the two frames are shown in darker or lighter shades. So if two identical frames were perfectly aligned, they would appear as flat gray. Of course, your target and reference frames usually won't be exactly the same, so it's important to focus on the area around the defect you wish to correct, as I've done here. In free transform mode, you can use the mouse to move, rotate, stretch, and skew the reference frame for perfect accuracy. When you are happy with the free transform result, hit Enter to accept them. This will put paint back into normal view so I can start painting. First, I'll select my brush. Each of the ten brushes can be customized in terms of size, border blend, opacity, aspect, and angle. Each brush will save your settings until you change them. I can see how each parameter affects the brush, both in the preview window and in the image area. Just like in DRS, Paint has overrides to adjust the fix. In this case, I want to change the density to match the target frame. In Paint, I also use the A key to reject a fix and G key to accept it. Paint will keep track of a series of strokes that you make on a single frame called the stroke set. The stroke set will be auto-accepted if you move to a different frame and make a new fix. Now that I've walked you through this specific example, let's take a look at the reveal mode options in more detail. I'll start with free transform mode. Click and drag inside the square to translate. Click and drag outside the square to rotate. Grab a corner to stretch. Grab a side point to stretch without maintaining the aspect ratio. Hold down control to skew the shape.
press Shift C to reset the transformation to the original position. Remember, you can hit Enter to accept and begin painting. After I accept a transformation, Paint will remember these settings and continue to apply them. So if I move to another frame, I can press the Alt key to view the alignment. You can see a couple of things here. First, because I'm in relative reference frame mode, the reference frame has been updated to what is now two frames back, rather than statically staying on frame 76. Second, the alignment has been kept, which is really useful when the camera is panning. In some cases, you'll find the alignment is still spot on. When it isn't, you can save time and keystrokes by having a really close starting point when you enter Free Transform. Now I'll show you Clone Mode. You can access this mode by the shortcut key 2. In Clone Mode, you select a point to clone from instead of aligning two frames. The point can be on the same frame or any other frame. To set the clone point, hold down Control shift This will jump to the reference frame. Then just click where you want to clone from. The red brush outline will confirm your selection. Release Control shift to return to the current frame, ready to paint. The brush you are painting with is outlined in green. The red clone point brush remains for reference. Besides having a relative or absolute reference frame, in Clone Mode, you can specify the clone point itself to be relative or absolute. I'm in Relative Mode right now, which means the clone point will follow my brush, always staying the same distance away as it was when I made my first stroke. Now I'll reject the entire set of strokes using Shift-A to show you Absolute Mode. In absolute mode, each time I finish a stroke, the clone point brush snaps back to its original position. I'm going to reject this stroke set as well. In clone mode, it will sometimes make sense to use a clone point on the current frame. I can do this by setting the relative reference frame to be zero. Now when I hold down Control shift I stay in the same frame so I can select my clone point. Now it works very much like a stamper. I'm going to reject that stroke set. In any of the modes, you have the option to erase part of a stroke or stroke set rather than just outright rejecting it. By switching to the Erase Brush, I can paint away some of the pixels I have changed. Notice that the brush has turned yellow to let me know I'm in Erase Mode. Erase Strokes can be accepted or rejected just like regular paint strokes. The last mode I'll show you is Color. Color Mode is a simple paint utility that allows you to paint pixels to be a specific color. You can select one of the saved colors, or use the color gradient. Or even select a color from within the frame. Once you have selected a color, you can paint brush strokes just like you would in Reveal or Clone Mode. and even erase them. There is also a paint bucket mode that allows you to fill a large area of adjacent pixels that are the same color. You can adjust the threshold setting to tell paint how close together two colors should be to be included in the fill. Color mode offers the usual accept and reject shortcut keys.